This 34-year-old CEO wakes up at 4 a.m. every day and runs eight miles every day. Here's the Wall Street Wonder Kids daily routine. This is a crazy article. Uh, he happens to be the CEO of PF Chang's. And what inspired this video is that uh, we often hear things like, oh man, it would be great to be an executive. All you get to do is golf all day and have meetings. It must be nice and get paid millions of dollars. Um, and there's definitely a big misnomer uh, when you have a successful company and you look at the executive leadership, people think that they don't do anything. At least some people, it's very easy to see that. You know, you always hear about, uh, you know, people who feel like the executives don't do their part or they don't, you know, they don't have to and their and their lives are so easy. And so really, what does that look like? Is that even is that even true? And how does that normally operate? And I think this uh, this article is going to show you uh, the level of discipline and the level of of uh, of of structure that one has to have to, in their life in order to be an executive leader in a role at and have a in a company that's actually successful. I think there definitely are leaders that abuse uh, their positions of power, and I and I, I mean that's beyond a shadow of a doubt. In fact, I have personal experience with that and have seen that myself, so that's not a surprise to me at all. But when you look at a company that's actually doing well, like the classic saying, "Where there's smoke, there's fire," you're going to see. Um, what the cause is behind that. So let's jump into this. I think this is going to be a great article. Uh, he starts off by say, quoting uh, the, the executive, my life is my work and my work is my life. Um, he uh, was a former Wall Street whiz turned CEO of casual dining restaurant chain P.F. Chang's. His name is Damola Adam Lincoln. I wanted to make sure I got the name right. In the midst of the remote work revolution, employees worldwide have been fighting for a better work-life balance, pushing back against employer mandates to return to the office and advocating for four-day work weeks. Even global superstar Rihanna recently expressed that finding balance is almost impossible. As for this uh, CEO, work and life has never have never been separate i never really have been a person that separated work and life he tells fortune it mixes um and i believe that that's part of his uh, executive role i think that uh someone in so anyone that i've ever talked to that's in that executive role or anyone that i've ever been around in that executive role the he they would tell you that the that their life consists of their work completely it's the same thing for someone who is a pastor at a church uh that, that all of their friends all of their communication all of their stuff both in work and out of work is all revolving around uh, that that role and so that's a that's a very common thing within leadership of anything That's the same thing with executives That's because typically and people don't like to hear this But typically when you're an executive at that level you're getting paid big bucks But you are working seven days a week. It doesn't matter what anyone says you are doing a little bit of work uh, on, on the, your, your days off. Let me say it this way you you have your work days where you work all day But then on your days off you you don't actually you, you have a little bit of work to do you do a little bit of work So you're not actually there is no actual true um, day off for people in that position you're always on call even when you're on vacation uh, so that might be because the 34 year old has a lot on his plate he's one of the few uh, black CEOs leading a major US company there are only six black CEOs in the fortune 500 and only eight percent of the uh, of c-suite executives are black according to a 2021 Washington Post analysis of the 50 most valuable companies uh, and he balances running the helm with his job as a partner at Paulson and Co and the hedge and uh, the hedge fund that acquired uh, the Asian-inspired restaurant chain in 2019. It follows a successful career in private equity uh, where he worked at top companies, including Goldman Sachs and TPG Capital. Uh, he says he dedicated his finance era to working all the time, even on the weekends. And so um, I think a lot of that probably prepped him for the role he's in now. And I think that that's one of the reasons why he's being so successful. I mean, that's, that's just a common thing that you see across the chain and it seems like it runs in similar veins. So I thought it was so fun. So it wasn't like I had to go in, go uh, to go in on a Saturday. Um, it was like I got stuff to do and I want to knock it out or I want to uh, look at something. So it's not unlike the life of many financier, uh, financiers and CEOs who are known for logging after work hours to get the job done. He says he still works on the weekends and can sometimes be found checking emails by the pool. All, um, although he has never prioritized finding a work-life balance, he acknowledges that work impacts people differently. It's an individual thing. Uh, he says, adding that you should separate the two if work is stressful. That's why he encourages employees to build in buffers, taking a day off on a Tuesday or Wednesday since weekends are usually busy at the restaurant due to higher demand. But for him, despite all the pressures of being a chief executive, work doesn't stress him out. 
And I, I think that's great. I think that's great that he has found a way to do uh, his role and uh, be successful and not uh, find stress in that role. So he gave Fortune a sneak peek into his daily routine, which kicks off at 4 a.m. sharp. So from 4 a.m. runs to p.m. cigars. So there's his picture in the morning. That's his 4 a.m. Uh, jog. He does eight miles a day. Um, and then, you know, then he's got his home office here. Nice home office needs to do a little bit better of a computer setup, bro. Come on. You're, you're a CEO. You can, you can get some nicer, nicer, uh, computer there. Come on, splurge a little. <laughs> and he's got his drive to the office and he's got his work office. Uh, this is normally what you see here. Uh, now you have a very, in my opinion, this is a very, uh, humble office C for a CEO. Um, and this is kind of the direction a lot of companies are moving in. You don't see a lot of the CEOs and executives having these big grandstanding offices if you are working for an organization where the ceo has to have this big grandstanding office uh, yeah so that's a I, I appreciate that and then he's got his uh cigar by the pool good for him uh, looks like a good one so um and so early to bed early uh early uh up so this is where so so what inspired me to, to go over this um article and the reason why when i saw this i i, I felt like i really wanted to do this is i was uh, having a conversation with a friend uh, a couple months back and the friend passed a comment about someone uh, that they knew that was in an executive leadership role at a very very large organization and uh they the that person said, Oh, it must be nice. You know, I'm, you know, we're, we're over here in our, our business and we're, you know, we're going through a struggle right now and it's hard work trying to get up and we don't have time. You know, everything's on fire. You know, uh, they're, they were experiencing hardship in their business at the time I had the conversation and they said, you know, so-and-so over here at this very large company, you know, must be nice for them. They don't do anything all day. They probably get up and go golfing and they sit around and they were 100% serious. Cause I, I even said, you know, I laughed. I said, you, 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 you know, you, you know, that's not, you know that's not correct right and that's basically what i said and then they reiterated and affirmed like no this they, they definitely don't do anything all day they just hang out and you know they probably golf and they have assistants doing everything for them and i told the person you could never be more wrong there is no way that that organization is running as smooth as, as it's happening and that person is doing nothing all day that does that's not how that works that's not that is not the way the world works and they they were it was a very contentious like you know, back and forth because they, they just, they, they, they did, they felt like, no, you there's, when you get to that level, you work less. It's like, that's not, no, when your organization grows and you, and you actually have to grow these people, what you see most of the time when you actually read into their daily lives are, are, are some of the most disciplined people, um, that you will ever meet. And, and you have to be that person. You have to be disciplined. If you're not disciplined, it will kill you. It will collapse you. This person saying work doesn't stress me out is a result of their discipline in their lifestyle and being able to um, what what this what he's doing is he's able to do his job and he's able to do it with a balance in his life where he has found stability and able to uh, do things that he enjoys at the same time. That's why it's so uh, it's so uh, uh, crazy for him to do for him to. Um, or well, that's why it's so crazy. His his schedule is so crazy, and it is the way that it is. Like so, he, he breaks it down here in the text. So 4:30 a.m., early to bed, early up. Uh, that's he. He begins his day with a seven to eight mile run, uh, which he says helps him uh, feel less stressed and more relaxed. I mean that is insane. Eight miles. It's, it's very impressive. Good for him. Uh, so uh, 6 a.m. after his run, he showers and prepares to head to P.F. Chang's headquarters in Scottsdale, Arizona. Before hitting the road, he takes a few minutes to review the chain's performance numbers from the previous day in his home office, checking to see if they aligned with the company's expectations. This is very important. He's not sitting there uh, watching YouTube videos or you know, uh, you know, reading uh, you know whatever he wants. At 6 a.m., he's already he's already uh, working. He's already taking the time to prepare for his day. I see most very successful people um, before going into work or before going into whatever they're getting ready to do will take some time to prep their mind uh, and get their mind aligned and focused on what they need to get focused on before they step into the door at their office, before they turn on their computer at home. They will prep themselves to review things, they'll review their schedule, they'll review their calendar. Uh, one thing that I started to do in my role, I'm not really reviewing uh, performance. Uh, you know, in some in the organization I represent, so, um, I I do review like bank accounts, and I do review um, 
uh, uh, spreadsheets as far as financials and things like that before I head in before I he head into work. I've started to do that at the beginning of my day. I review the calendar that I have for the day. Make sure I understand all the work I need to do. Um, that also happens to be I, I do to-do lists and I create to-do lists in my calendar. So when I go into my calendar, I'll go into the to-do list and see what I have to get done for the day. Um, and so that's one way I've been able to keep up with the workload. How, you know, how do you make sure you don't forget things? Well, immediately during my workday, I will create a to-do list on my uh, work calendar, uh, and then I will type in. Uh, right there in the moment before I forget make sure you do XYZ uh, today and that's my to-do list for the next day uh, so I get up review my calendar review our accounts review our uh, expenditures and then uh, boom head into head into work and that helps me prepare and get ready for the day and know where everything's at and so I've I've picked up that habit because I follow people like this person here who does that in his in their work life balance and it has tremendously helped me get my head get my head straight get focused walk into the office, ready to go. 7 a.m., uh, he arrives at the headquarters, 20 minute drive from his house, casually meets with the COO and CFO uh, before jumping into a day full of meetings. His schedule is packed with internal and external meetings. And in between meetings, in between meetings, he's managing emails, prioritizing the most essential tasks to ensure employees are being met with timely approvals to move forward with their work. See that? So even he has to, uh, even he has to manage multiple meetings and dealing with emails and then 6 p.m when the day's meetings are over so his day his work day is ending at 6 p.m guys uh, clears his inbox and heads home still at the office at 6 p.m uh, but his work day isn't exact doesn't exactly stop there as the ceo of the major restaurant chain uh, he's no stranger to mixing business with dinner often me meeting with colleagues and connections after the traditional nine to five uh, work day ends as he puts it it's a hospitality business so a lot of dinners are involved and so he's still working in the sense of uh, when he's meeting uh, with, uh, you know, peak connections in the business and things like that, that's happening in his after hours time as well. Um, and so the principle here and the thing that I really wanted to stress and the thing that made me really want to focus on this article is to show that you cannot, you, you cannot operate at this level without being disciplined. There are people that are in the roles that do not have this level of discipline in their life and they don't last long or they're doing terrible. It's never it's it's never like their organizations are are running like a well-oiled machine. Typically, typically um when you look at these executives uh, and these people that are running these these organizations and they're and they're being successful and their companies are doing very very well, it's because the executives themselves are living a life of discipline and their and their days are packed out and planned uh, from the moment their eyes open and to the moment their eyes close in bed and that's it's that's the level of discipline it takes to operate um, at that level it's not just some simple hey let's go golfing every day maybe it was for some time maybe there's a they, maybe there's a point in time where organizations grow to be so large that the the executives are just goofing off all day if that's happening though typically that comes around to bite them in the back that does not that does not last long then that's tip that's what you see nowadays and that's what it takes uh, here's another article here uh, it was written in uh, 2018 um, uh, and it says here's uh, what CEOs actually do all day and this kind of breaks it up ever wonder what CEOs actually do all day a study published on Monday by Harvard Business Review sheds light on how those in the top spot use their time the study launched in 2006 by Harvard professors Michael Porter and Nitin Nuria man I, I suck at names guys I'm sorry <laughs> I really do tracked out 27 CEOs uh, only two women and 25 men of companies with an average annual revenue of 13.1 billion spent their days uh, data was collected from the CEOs in 15 minute increments 24 hours a day, seven days a week for three months. Overall, the study collected 60,000 CEO hours. It reveals an average. So these are averages, an average. The leaders worked 9.7 hours per day, which totals just 48.5 hours per work week. Now that's work week. They also worked 79% of weekend days at an average of 3.9 hours daily and 70% of vacation days with an average of 2.4 hours on those days. Altogether, the study found that CEOs worked an average of 62.5 hours a week. That is an average. Okay. That's not, that's not actual. Like they're not looking at someone like this guy, this 34 year old CEO, uh, over PF Chang's the, this, that's an average of what they're working. It is not, Hey, you get to the top and you get to goof off. 
That's not how that works. If you have leadership that's doing that, it is a great way to quickly run your organization into the ground. And that's the truth. You, you will see it every single time. And uh, in every situation that I've been in, uh, where I've uh, seen either a startup, because most of my experience is in that that startup phase, uh, or even like, you know, even, it doesn't matter where it is, nonprofit, for profit. I've I've seen I've been in one a nonprofit, and where the organization is, uh, there's there it seems like there's there's no or, there's no organization within the organization. That's ridiculous, but you get what I'm saying. Like things don't don't seem organized. They don't seem planned out. They don't seem well thought out. That they, that things often fall apart. Uh, things are not functioning at the level that they should be functioning at even just at a basic like professional level oftentimes you will go and you'll see that it comes from the top and at the very top the person that's running it it doesn't have discipline in their own life and the thing is just eating them alive and they're just there's no there's no follow through and when that happens those things are meat grinders and those people don't last long they will get chewed up and spit out so it says here the average American. So once again, we're talking in uh, numbers of, uh, of averages. Uh, the average American works 44 hours per week or 8.8 .8 hours per day. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, with nearly a third reportedly working on the weekend. I know a lot of people will sit here and say, I work way longer than that. I work way harder than that. This is an average. They're talking about averages. If you don't understand that, just Google what, what, how do you determine what the average uh, number, uh, what the average is of a number. And that it'll show you that, you know, typically when you do that, you get these uh, equations like this, but it worked on an average of 62.5 hours a week. And they're constantly working weekends. If you are going to operate at that level, you have to, uh, you have to engage in discipline within your own life. Um, it's something that I started to practice. It's something that I started to see when I first started my career. I had a background in sales, and as you as you know, a a a, um, a, uh, a constant um, stereotype of salespeople is that they're not good with money, uh, that they don't you know they they live these crazy lifestyles, they live out of control, and so I quickly realized that in my sales position, I was, I was pretty good at it. I did pretty well. I wasn't the top of the company, but I wasn't the bottom. I was, you know, doing pretty good. And, and even if you don't have to be this excelling superstar salesperson to do well in sales, you can, if you're, if you're uh, decent and you're, uh, uh, you know, uh, able to communicate with people and you're able to hold conversations and you're able to just follow the processes a lot of times that these sales companies implement you will make good money and you know occasionally you'll win awards and occasionally you don't and so that's kind of where i fell in that spectrum and i quickly realized that man if i don't plan out uh if i don't if i don't if i don't engage in some discipline it's like how am i making all this money and yet uh you know on a month where i have a slower month i can barely pay my bills and that's when my wife and I, you know, uh, partnered together and we came up with a battle plan of how we were going to do our expenditures, how we were going to pay our bills, how we were going to utilize our money. And what we wound up doing was having our uh, savings uh, to where I uh, had my bills paid out a month in advance. So I, I, you know, I'd always have next month's bills paid out. And what that allowed me to do is in the leaner times where like I went into a very slow season in my sales uh, I was still able to pay my bills. I was still able to provide food for my family. I was still able to live comfortably. I never really felt the stress, um, but it, it, it allowed me to keep going. And that was one way that I was able to engage. And that was my first step into discipline. And then it slowly went into, hey, I need to get healthy. So now I'm in this process here where I'm trying to... Um, continue in that healthy lifestyle make sure i uh, monitor my eating make sure that i am exercising not because i'm i want to you know everybody wants to look good but it's not about like oh i want to be you know i want to look like a, an underwear model no it's it's about i have children um i have uh plans for my future i want to walk my daughter down the wedding uh aisle uh, one day and so all these types of things that you want to think about and it's like okay so I'm going to maintain a healthy lifestyle in my eating uh, in my exercising and all these things that I'm going to engage in discipline and from that being able to do that uh, in my own life has allowed me to engage in a new level uh, and a new type of discipline in my work life and it's been it has really helped and this is what people need to understand is that these people 
operating at this level over a successful organization are not goofing off all day, blowing money out of their butthole, uh, you know, um, you know, golfing and, you know, you know, all this kind of stuff. These people are working and they have a, a level of discipline that allows them to work in a way that the organization needs where they're also working the after hours, they're working the early hours and they're engaging in discipline within their personal life. This story is more common than the other story, which is the one that everybody believes the stereotype. Will you find people that don't do this and are over successful companies? Yes, and I would tell you that those people are more rare than they are uh, than they are normal. Like that's a rarity. That's that's an, that's an unheard of situation. And oftentimes there is uh, details and context around that situation that allows for that person to be that way. And um, I can tell you one situation that I know of personally, where the leader did not live a disciplined lifestyle, barely, you know, it would almost seem like they didn't even care about the organization. And yet the organization was still running well. Well, then you found out that the COO was doing everything. Um, and it was an, it was an abusive so, uh, situation for the COO, but the organization was running. And so everyone looked at the leader and thought, man, this must be what it's like to be a leader. And it's like, no, that's not what was going on. That person was just being abusive towards their staff. And that situation got rectified. Eventually, that person got the hammer and it was not pretty when it happened and that and they never worked in the field ever again so it does come but you'll see situations that that are the abnormal but this here with this person's doing waking up 4 a.m doing this this is the normal of what it takes to operate at that level and um even if your plans are not to be a CEO, even if your plans are not to be an executive, even if your plans is not to, you don't care about making millions and millions of dollars and all that stuff, that's totally fine. But if you, if, but I can tell you right now, whatever you're doing, no matter what it is, if you engage in discipline, you'll do it better. If you institute discipline into your life, you'll, you'll have more freedom. Saying no to yourself, what's crazy is often leads to having more freedom in your life. I thought this was a really, really interesting article. I was really excited to go over it. I was actually looking at this article all week and it just kept popping up, you know, that the content I had to create um, kept taking place over this. And so this is something I wanted to talk about all week long. I think this is this stuff is really cool. It really inspires me to do better. I hope it does the same for you. I really want to uh, engage in this kind of practice in my life and, and continue to engage in more and more things and, and really helps me to feel like I'm taking control and I have a vision and I have direction uh, that I'm going in in my life. It doesn't mean, it's not about, oh, I want to do better at work and I want to be rich. It's about, I want to feel like there's a purpose and there's vision and there's a direction in my life that allows me to walk uh, with intention and be intentional in the things that I do. I don't want to just sit on the couch and zone out. And I'm not saying that those things are bad. You definitely have periods and times where, you know, you do need to take a break. I have times where I sit down and I scroll and watch goofy stuff on YouTube uh, just because it, it, you know, you, you do have that time where you can separate and, you know, kind of like uh, escapism, engage in escapism. I think, I think, I think escapism uh, that is uh, engaged in with discipline where you're like, okay, this is done now. I'm going to move on is healthy. But what happens is people engage in escapism and it never stops. All they want to do is escape. All they want to do is escape. All they want to do is escape. And, and then, and it, they wonder why they don't have, you know, they, they feel like their life is, uh, meaningless and it's because you haven't pursued anything meaningful. That's why. So anyways, that's, that's where I'll go with that. I think that's enough. I thought that was interesting. I hope this helps you guys. I hope that you, you feel inspired. What, what, uh, types of things do you guys engage in? Uh, and what things are you guys doing, uh, to engage in discipline in your life? Do you think this is true? Actually, could I be missing something too? Tell me in, in the comment section below, do you disagree with this? Do you think that this is uh, crap and all fluff? I'm, I really want to know. I really am interested to know. I'm not looking to start an argument, but I really, I do want to see like what other people's opinions of this are in the comment section below. Uh, please like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. It really helps the channel. I thank you guys for, for all the engagement that we're getting and the growth that we're seeing. I'm very, very appreciative of that. Um, and I will catch you guys in the next one.